Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a super natural focus. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing The Blood Beast Mutations by Carl John Lee and The Deep by Nick Cutter. I've been trying to keep myself really, really busy. Just, you know, keep my mind from wandering into the darkest corners of my mind. <laughs> I've been playing Alice, The Madness Returns. I don't know if you know this game or you've heard about it. It's pretty old, it came out in 2011, but it's a beautiful game. It's just so fun to play and the artwork is <laughs> awesome. It's a twisted Alice in Wonderland. It's really, really dark. It takes the story of Alice and turns it into a struggle for mental health. It's really, really, really cool. So let's get into these reviews because I have a lot to say about them. Get moving. Time waits for no one. The change has begun. And if fear paralyzes you, we are lost. This story takes place in New York City. There is a virus that has taken over the country that is turning people into these bloodthirsty, monstrous, cannibal monster things. And Dan's wife has become sick with a virus and she has been taken to the hospital. He's not able to get in contact with her, so he has determined that he is going to fight his way from his apartment to the hospital to try and bring her home or at least make sure that she's okay. This isn't easy for Dan because he needs to fight anti-maskers and anti-vaccinators along with MAGA people and also these cannibalistic zombie monster things before he can even get close to where he wants to go. If you watched the reading vlog that I did for this, you probably know that I didn't really love this one. It's really not for me. It's not my kind of horror. It's not my kind of uh, writing style or humor or anything like that. It's definitely not for me. It is kind of interesting though, in the sense of how it's depicting COVID. This was written in 2020, so it's pretty early days for COVID. So this is definitely like an anti-love letter, a hate letter, how government handled the situation and how people responded to the situation, like the anti-maskers, the anti-vaxxers, Trump's rhetoric about COVID, the racism, MAGA, the conspiracy theorists. So all of that gets mentioned here in the story. And the story is basically like everything that's happened with COVID, except with one change, which is that the virus actually changes you into this bloodthirsty, cannibalistic, monster creature thing. On one hand, we have this very literal representation of COVID. And then on the other, we have Dan's story, which is really frivolous and silly and kind of absurd and cheeky and stuff. Um, so the tone of both sides just really didn't mesh. Kind of reminds me of like a bit of a cheesy 80s horror comedy movie, along with like the humor is pretty predictable. There's definitely some funny dialogue and there's some funny action, like, because, you know, there's this absurdity of, like, violence that can be kind of funny and silly and stuff. I think I would have enjoyed this more if it had more depth to the story and if there had been maybe a unique perspective to the situation. Just something a little bit more than just like his super hot 24 year old wife and shooting a bunch of MAGA people and, uh, um, these creatures. So it's, I just felt like I wish there had just been more. It does feel weird to read something about COVID in this manner because it's still happening. I just wish there was something more meaningful there. Kind of a weird read, to be honest. about Luke who has been asked to visit his brother in the Mariana Trench where he's doing research at the bottom of the ocean eight miles down. His brother is doing research on some kind of algae or life form called ambrosia they've been finding in the ocean and they believe that it could be groundbreaking technology to cure the pandemic that's happening and the pandemic is called the gets it's some type of virus that causes you to forget 
everything like dementia over a period of time. But not only does your mind forget, your body begins to forget too, which means that your body begins to forget how to manage itself. Patients just end up dying. There's no cure. There's really nothing that anyone can do at this point. He is taken to a floating military base and there is a Marine named Alice who goes by Al and she is going to be taking him down to the ocean floor. Once they are there, they realize that the scientists and researchers who are in the station are in a really bad way. And now they both have to figure out how to get them out, how to save the station, and how also to save the research. I really enjoyed this. It was creepy. It was spooky. It was disturbing. It was shocking. It was chilling. It was really good. And what I like about the, the bottom of the ocean is it's very similar to space. No one's going to hear you scream. There's no oxygen. There's nowhere to go. And these pressures, like the pressure of water in an ocean, just like other factors in space, can have this profound effect on the human mind. There's everything in this book. So this is part mystery, part horror, part psychological horror, part ghost story, part sci-fi horror. There are spooky things. There are disturbing relationships between characters. There are mysterious and inexplicable events happening in the station. There is a pandemic that's happening on top of the surface of the world. And there's even a friendly dog who accompanies Luke and Al while they're down there in the station. And of course, I hate this because then I'm just stressing about the dog the whole time, which happens every time I play a video game and I have a pet or I'm watching a movie and there's a dog. I'm like, oh no, oh no. This book does have some things that will be uncomfortable for some people. Sexual assault, um, animal experimentation. Um, I don't like reading about this stuff. I'm pretty sensitive to it, but in this case, I felt like it was fine. It was part of the story and it was handled well, I'll say. It's also very claustrophobic, so if that's something that makes you uncomfortable, this might be a, a difficult read for you. So the meat of this story is basically about memories and about reality. And it's really, really cool. There's a lot of stuff in between too. Um, the memories are something where, this is where we get to learn about Luke. We get to learn about memories of his that he had forgotten that give us a lot of insight to his relationship with his brother, the very disturbing relationship with his mother, and also other things that Luke had experienced, mainly as a child. And once we're out of those memories, we're back in the station, which is horrifying on its own. Like, it's just like you get no rest whatsoever. This is a Mobius strip of nightmares in a watery grave. One of the most disturbing things in the story was something just, it was just a very small part of the book, but, um, when Luke was a child, his mother picked up a toy chest for him. And she insisted on calling this toy chest a tickle trunk. Which in itself, I never, ever want to hear anyone I'm living with have a, something that they call a tickle trunk. It sounds really wrong on so many levels. And this tickle trunk, of course, is painted in these weird clowns. Of, but this object has its own little secret. So. Can't tell you what it is, of course, but little things like that stuck out. It, it was like the tickle trunk thing and like the relationships with uh, Luke's family that really kind of gave me a little bit of a Stephen King vibe, which was really cool. It is fairly obvious that the pandemic was kind of an excuse to get Luke and Clayton together. But let me propose this to you. What would it take for you to talk to a family member or a person that you knew that you refuse to speak to, refuse to have anything to do with because of a lot of personal history for your own sanity, for your own boundaries. Thanks for calling Haunted Hookups. Who? Oh. I haven't talked to that bag of bones since 1767. She stole my ribs. What? The world is ending. That's not news. Oh, it's really ending. I just begun my YouTube career. I'm a starlet. She's the only one who can stop it. But only if I go see her. Eh, uh, fine. 
but I want my ribs back. It would take a pandemic. It would take the end of the world. I know a few readers have said that it felt a little slow for them. And I will say there are a few sections, like a few pages where I felt like Luke was just going a little bit too long about the same sentiment, you know? So it'd be like, I like ice cream. I like ice cream. I like ice cream. I like, ice cream. obviously it's not ice cream, but I don't like that myself. So those are the moments where I will skim paragraphs. My brain is definitely a squirrel who's had too much caffeine and too much coffee. So my attention span is already in peril. But as a squirrel, I will say that uh, the pace for me was really good. I also, there's also a superficial aspect of the book that I like, which is the chapters are super short. Oh my God, I loved it. Because it just makes you feel like you're, you're making progress somehow. And it just moves really quickly. And this book is 500 pages. So I think that really helped with the reading experience. So let's talk about the ending for a second. So by this point, I'm like riding this roller coaster hard. Like my arms are up, like everything, right? I'm screaming my face off. I'm ready. I am so ready to get off this thing. <laughs> so we slide into the ending and I was like, huh? It really surprised me and it took me off guard. I. I was expecting a lot of things. This was not the thing that I was expecting. The ending, the ending was interesting. There were some, some things that I had a hard time kind of accepting, I guess. So for me, the ending was good. It wasn't great, but it was good. If you liked Event Horizon, you're really gonna like this, I think. So that was the book review. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, please like and comment down below. And if you'd like more videos from me, please hit subscribe. Other than that, please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.